Hi, this is Pastor Darrell Myatt from the Wichita Mountains of Oklahoma. Today is Friday, December 9th, 2022. This channel is all about world news, Bible prophecy, end-time events, and the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, you don't have to look through the news very much today to see that we are living in very different times. The America I grew up with is long gone. You know, our freedom of speech is gone. I, I had a YouTube channel deleted for speaking truth. Um, YouTube just said, yeah, no, you don't get to say that stuff. None of it was lies, but it didn't meet their agenda. You see, there is an agenda in this world, and we know that the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who believe not. According to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, the God of this world's the devil. We can see his actions all over the place. We can see his handiwork all over the scene. Seems to be everywhere. The Bible tells us that the world will come against Israel. We're seeing it. It's happening. Out of Breitbart, the UN demands Israel surrender its nuclear arsenal. The UN is demanding that Israel surrender its nuclear arsenal. Now, Israel hasn't threatened anybody. They haven't launched any nukes against anyone. Um, in fact, there's no real proof that Israel even has nukes. Although, most foreign estimates put their nuclear stockpile somewhere between 80 and 400 nuclear warheads. They haven't used them. Anywhere. And honestly, if Israel gets rid of their nukes... Hmm. Well that nuclear deterrent is probably what helps keep them from being destroyed. Now, maybe it's part of God's plan for Israel to get rid of their nukes so that when the hand of God protects Israel and nothing else, then the world will say, well, look what God has done, not look what Israel has done with their incredible nuclear technology or their fierce weaponry or whatever it is. <clears throat> But the UN going after Israel over their nucle nuclear program while not doing anything to Iran. Iran, whose leadership believes that they have to create global chaos in order to usher in their Mahdi, their 12th Imam. And what better way to create global chaos than to launch a few nukes? Iran marching toward nuclear weapons. And the world seems okay with this, yet somehow Israel, the only Jewish state, can't have any to protect themselves. Just amazing to me, watching the godlessness of this world, watching people coming against God's people. It's, it's biblical. You know, God told us this would happen. God told us this would happen. And we're watching it. We're watching it. Speaking of Iran... Out of the Huffington Post, Iran carries out first known execution related to the protests. The Iranian Revolutionary Court declared Mohsen Shikari, 23, guilty of waging war against God. So they killed him. He was hanged. Hmm. For causing unrest. So you speak out against the government in Iran and they kill you. Hmm. They throw homosexuals off the buildings and kill them in Iran. And yet so many of the Democrats in this country support Iran. It's like, wait a minute, you hypocrites. They're killing homosexuals and you're supporting them. They're killing protesters and you're supporting them. And yet somehow I can't protest anything here without being railed as whatever names they want to call me. Amazing. Just amazing to me. You know, Iran will lead that world army against Israel. Ezekiel 38 and 39. Read all about it. It's going to happen. Israel will strike Iran's nuclear facilities in order to ensure their ability to continue to exist. 
and the world will sympathize with Iran. Iran will be crying, look what Israel did to us, and the world will say, well, do what you need to, go get them. And then you'll be able to read all about it in Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel 39, and you'll know that it's truth. Because what you'll see on CNN or any of the other lamestream media outlets, they'll be giving you their agenda, their spin, what they want you to believe, not what God's Word says. This world doesn't believe God's Word. It's amazing. Out of MSN, Iran protesters say unrest will get worse after execution. Students now vow to continue demonstrations and demand change in Iran. Hmm. Demanding change in Iran. Oh, speaking of change, um, you see what our man in the White House did. Joe Biden, who wants there to be a limit on the number of bullets you can have in a magazine, who wants to limit the kinds of guns you can buy, releases an international arms dealer known as the Merchant of Death, who has been <sighs> killing Americans, uh, doing all kinds of things, made an exchange for a women's basketball player who was in jail for trying to sell drugs in Russia. Hmm. Yet we leave an army man, a military man, excuse me, a military man in a Russian jail. I'm sorry, this, this is a, a global embarrassment. We have a U.S. Marine prisoner in Russia. And we make a trade with a merchant of death, an international arms dealer. Oh, Joe wants to be strong on guns, yet let's let this guy go for a drugged up basketball player. Hey, great trade, Joe. What a moron. <sighs> Leaving yet another soldier, an American Marine to rot in a Russian prison. You know what? Why'd you release the merchant of death? Looks like Joe Biden got outplayed by Vladimir Putin. Yeah. You know, as believers, we have to have a war room. Yeah, we are at war. We gotta put on the full armor of God. You know, a lot of people try to bear their burdens, their heartaches on their own. But Jesus gave us a, a solution. In the Sermon on the Mount, he urges us to go into our inner room. Um, to close the door. Pray to God the Father in heaven. We need to learn how to talk to God in private about what concerns us. Um, Jesus said, but when you pray, Matthew 6, verse 6, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. The inner room becomes our war room, where we fight our battles with sin, with conflicts, with decisions and difficulties, until we fully surrender in obedience to God. According to Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 13, believers are in a struggle, not, not against people, but against rulers, against powers against world forces of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And because spiritual battles require divine protection, we're told to put on the full armor of God. The full armor of God, you know, the helmet of salvation that protects our thinking, protects our mind, the breastplate of righteousness that helps to guard our emotions. Girdle of truth allows us to walk in the light our feet have to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We're to take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is our weapon. This is our weapon against the enemy. When the devil tried to tempt Jesus in the wilderness, all three times Jesus responded with, It is written. Where was it written? In God's Word. This is the weapon he used against the devil himself. 
It's our weapon today. Yet the world will tell you, oh, that's not the word of God. Oh, it's been corrupted. It's been watered down. It's been messed up and translated so many times we barely even know what the original text says. Another lie from hell. We have the Dead Sea Scrolls, which show us that what we have today is some 99.8% accurate. It's not changed. It's not been corrupted. We need the shield of faith to completely cover us and extinguish all the enemy's arrows. And we have to pray. We have to pray. Satan's the enemy. He's a murderer. He's a liar. He's a deceiver, a schemer, a tempter, a destroyer. Jesus said he's the father of lies. But as believers, we don't have to be his victim. God has given us the key to living in a manner which pleases him and honors him. And that key is prayer. In the war room of prayer, we fought our battles on our knees. Coming boldly to the Heavenly Father, sharing the innermost thoughts of our hearts, knowing that He hears us, He intervenes on our behalf. Jesus spoke of a place of prayer. He lived a lifestyle. Christ's place of prayer changed as He travels, but prayer was always a priority in His life. It should be in ours as well. It should be a private place. Jesus said, go into an inner room, close the door. You know, if you want to find a quiet place to get alone with the Lord in prayer, he will provide one. But you know what? Leave your cell phone out unless you're using it for your Bible. God wants us to meet with him privately so we can develop an intimate relationship with him. It has to be a holy place. When we habitually meet with the Lord in the same place each day, it becomes holy because it's set apart to worship and commune with him. He accomplishes in our lives, whatever, as a result of the relationship we have with him in that sacred place of prayer. And as we depend on him in faith, he works in our lives in ways that we could never predict. It's where our battles are fought. Every time we have a difficulty, a problem, we should bring our concerns to God. We need his guidance. We need his assurance, his wisdom, his discernment to know how to respond and what to do. You know, there will be times when no one can help us, but he's always there to comfort us, to strengthen us, encourage us. And as we humble ourselves before the Lord in worship, crying out to him, he helps us in our times of trouble, helps us to overcome. It's where we get our instructions for the day. Uh, we never know what awaits us each day, but God knows. If we start the day in a quiet place, surrendering ourselves to him, and asking for direction and strength in whatever lies ahead, he'll walk with us through the day as our guide, as our protector. He promises to direct our path if we'll trust in him with all our heart and acknowledge him in all our ways instead of leaning upon our own understanding, right? Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. In the scriptures, he gives us instruction and direction for every circumstance we might face. But if we're not listening to the Lord, we won't know his battle plan and we will lose the fight. We can't live a godly life if our Bibles are closed. Let me say that again. We cannot live a godly life if your Bible is closed. Our prayer room, our war room, it's where we deal with our sins. We open God's word and our hearts before him. We have this opportunity to confess our sins and ask him, to convict us of anything in our lives that goes against his desire for us. And as we pray, we have to give the Lord time to speak to our hearts. Hmm. His Spirit communicates with us in our hearts. We develop this intimate relationship with God. You know, if you're too busy to spend uninterrupted time with him in prayer, you won't grow deeper in a relationship with God. God loves us. He wants all to come to repentance. He doesn't want anyone to perish. It's important to have prayer in your life, communing and fellowshipping with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, where we lay down our burdens. God daily lifts our burdens. He carries our concerns. He forgives our sins when we confess them. And he is... He will cleanse us of all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, verse 9. We go into our prayer room. We 
cry out to God. He understands and he mends our broken hearts. It's where we forgive others. You know, the Lord not only forgives our sins, but he helps us battle through our hurts so we can forgive others. It's where we get strengthened. In this holy place, we have the privilege of discussing every area of our lives with the creator of all things. And as we pour out our hearts, our hurts, our sorrows, and our burdens, the Lord comes to strengthen us. So where do you go to pray in private? I hope you have a place. You know, if you have a specific place, how has it become your holy place? If you haven't found a place yet, what can you do to find one? We need to have daily prayer in our life. It needs to be so habitual that you do it all the time. Um, what's stopping you from meeting with the Lord? What's keeping you from going to Him in prayer? Whatever it is, I hope and pray that you'll be able to overcome it and that you will not fall prey to the liar, to the deceiver who's out there trying to keep us from having this relationship with God Almighty. You need to strengthen yourself in God's Word because the liar, the deceiver, the deception, the fakes, they're going to just keep getting stronger. They're going to be more and more of them. It's, it's going to be feeling like we're surrounded by deceivers and liars. Jesus, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, when the disciples said, what will be the sign of your return? What will be the sign of the end of the world? First thing he said in all three of those passages is, watch that no man deceives you. The deception is everywhere. What are you believing today? As for me and my house, I'm believing the Word of God, and I am trusting Him to do everything He said He would do. And I'm seeking after Him. And I'm hoping He will use me for His glory, for His kingdom, to lead as many lost, blind beggars out of the darkness and into the light of truth that is Jesus Christ as I possibly can. What's your prayer today? Mm. Listen, I love you guys. Try to respond in a way that Jesus would respond. When people make fun of you, when they mock you, when they ridicule you. Make sure you put on the full armor of God. Because we are in a battle, people. And it's only going to get worse. It's going to get more intense prior to the return of Christ. Are you ready? You might want to get out your weapon and learn to use it. I love you guys. God bless you. Please go worship our Lord and Savior somewhere. Good Lord willing, I'll see you again on Monday.